What job would you never do no matter how much money they offered you? Tell me in the comments wherever you work for whatever money. Enjoy the show. Story 1. Any job where I have to work with kids and their parents. Not because I dislike kids or anything, but because parents are fucking idiots most of the time. One of the major reasons I decided not to have kids was because I do not want to deal with someone else being a completely shitty parent and letting their little fuckhead do whatever they want and my kid suffering because of it. If I was a parent or had to deal with parents, I would be arrested for the amount of fistfights I would get into with shit-level parents. I just couldn't do it. The stories I hear from my friend who have kids makes me way too angry. Story 2. There are a few jobs that are just too damaging to your health to be worth it. Coal mining is pretty much only still allowed because of the coal lobby. That shit destroys your lungs even with safety equipment. That is, if you don't get irreparably injured on the job first. If the pay was seven figures, I would consider doing it for like a year, but any more time, and you're just trading away years of your life. Story 3. I could never work in a morgue. I know people who needed money, worked there, and only managed to go three days before they called to quit. Having to walk around dead bodies, carrying body bags, and knowing any one of the patients might end up in your arms fecked them up. I would never be able to do that. Story 4. Politician. Sometimes I see all these batshit crazy politicians and think, why don't normal people run for office? Then I realized all the public attention and much of a nightmare it would be to have every little piece of your and your family's life scrutinized. No normal person would want to go through that, so instead, mostly narcissists run and are elected. Story 5. Middle Management. I have a hard enough time taking responsibility for my own work. Having upper management scream at you for not meeting your KPIs when you either have no control over things or there are very good reasons why things didn't get done, is my version of hell. I did work for 18 months as an acting frontline supervisor. There, I only had to answer for the output of 12 engineers. When they bid the job, they gave it to someone else, and I was thrilled. While I was doing it, the position changed from a technical supervisor responsible for reviewing and approving work to more of an HR position, ensuring that processes were followed and many checkboxes were ticked. Story 6. As dumb as this sounds, maintenance at a prison. I did it for a couple of years. I worked for the state of Indiana. It was rattled with incompetent leadership, poor money handling. It would take months to get a $30 part. Corrections officers are generally room temperature IQ people and would call me in when I was on call just to flip a breaker. It's just absolutely dumb. I'd never work for any government or state entity ever again. Stupid, stupid leadership and mishandling of taxpayer money. Story 7. So many people in this thread are thinking way too small. Any amount of money. They didn't specify a time. Imagine you work one hour of this job and you're set for life. Billions of dollars. Would you really not do any of these suggested jobs for one hour to never work again and increase the quality of life for yourself and everyone you love? The only jobs I mightn't do for any money are jobs that might disable or maim me or someone I love. And even then it's a consideration. P.S. I would also add asking for donations from the public from a major chain like Macca's or JB Hi-Fi to this. Story 8. I won't take any job I despise for any amount of money. I've quit jobs for less. So now, I work with dogs, taking care of them while owners need it and giving them attention and training. It's a local operation, so we don't put up with cruelty. We don't lie to owners. We don't accept dogs who may get hurt, hurt another be overly stressed. I also do it on the side sitting in people's houses with their animals. Best job I ever had. Story 9. As much as I'm interested in forensic science, I wouldn't be able to deal with bodies in various states of decay. I found this out the hard way. I always thought I had a strong stomach and could handle blood, poop, vomit, puss, you name it. I could deal pretty well until I went to nursing school. In the beginning, they send you to your clinicals in geriatric hospitals. You get a wide range of end-of-life diseases and disorders, including death, and it prepares you for everything. I was in my second week of clinical and was put on wound care one week and had to treat this poor woman whose body decided to start decaying while she was still alive. Her ankle and foot needed to be amputated, but she would not survive anesthesia, so palliative care is all we could do for her. I volunteered to hold the foot while another student cleaned the necrotic wounds and rebandaged it. Well, the minute the old dressing came off, the smell engulfed the entire room, dead flesh. I really didn't know what to expect, but it wasn't that. I didn't think it could be possible to smell like that on a living person. I got double vision, lost my hearing, and I'm still trying to regain composure and do my job, but between the smell and the feeling of the foot and the leg in several different pieces grinding under my fingers, I lost it. I gently set it down and excused myself and puked my guts out. I wasn't the only one. 
Four other students had already puked or fainted in the hallway before I made it out. They told us it was bad, but they didn't say how bad. One of the wildest experiences of my life. I respect the shit out of the detectives and officers and forensics teams that deal with far worse on a daily basis. If there is a God, they are doing his work for sure. Story 10 Call Center. I endured enough abuse cashiering at Walmart and Target for six years and as a waitress at a scummy restaurant for six months. At least in those situations, I was face to face with people, which humanized me in their eyes, and the majority of people apologized or softened their aggression. People don't give disembodied voices that kind of kindness. I've had a lot of friends work call centers, and it's one of the most depressing, soulless jobs to deal with. Cold sales. I hated that I was required to sell those scummy credit cards at Target. Making a career of harassing and bullying people into buying something they've already said they don't want makes my stomach churn. Story 12. Soldier. You want me to go abroad, risk my life, and point guns at anyone you decide for the benefit of maintaining you and your cronies' influence and power all under the pretense that it's for the greater good of a country and government that treats me like a number at best and actually couldn't give two shits about me or my mental and physical health. No thanks, I'm not buying it. Story 13. Patient care tech. That kind of intimacy just isn't me. At least not ATM in a couple years I could grow into something like that. I'll go back into fast food slash retail if I must. But I'm fighting really hard to stay in my field right now. There aren't many jobs to go around in my area for what I do which sucks because there's plenty for what I want to do. But I'm not done with school yet, and it's not a guarantee I get into the program I need for said job. Story 14. Anyway, that involves killing anything, probably. I wouldn't want to raise cattle just for them to be slaughtered. It wouldn't want to be the guy that pulls the lever on the electric chair. I wouldn't want to be a soldier, or at least an infantry soldier, that I would have to shoot at people. I don't even think I would want to be a surgeon, even with the potential to save life just with all the blood and guts everywhere. Not for me. Story 15. Anything detrimental to my mental health. For me, that's working with people with serious disabilities, physical or cognitive, working with the aged, working in mental health support, and working in the healthcare sector generally. I have a really hard time compartmentalizing negativity when it's things that happen to people I know meet, so I take my work home with me. I can't handle it. I also have a tendency to give more of myself than I actually have to give, I lived with someone with quite serious depression once. Student halls got to the point where if I didn't feed her, she wouldn't eat. I had to look after her razors and shit. She had to have them near, so she knew they were there and had the option, but couldn't have them too near, else she'd use them unnecessarily. Obviously, I was not qualified, mentally or professionally, to deal with shit like that, but someone needed me, so I tried to step up. My sleep deteriorated to the point where I had to live in 48 HR cycles, Awake for 36 HRs, asleep for 12 ARs repeat. Otherwise, I got exhausted at 6 p.m. every day, woke up wide awake at 9 p.m., and couldn't get any sleep until 6 p.m. the next day. Also, if I resisted the 6 p.m. sleep, that was also me until the next day. My grades tanked because I wasn't sleeping properly. I became dependent on takeaway food for my own nourishment, which I shared with her, which was deleterious to my bank account got to the point where I barely even had the energy to go and get the pizza I'd ordered from the door. Instead of finishing my first year at uni with about pound 2,000 in the bank, which I'd have had if I'd been able to follow my financial plan, I had to sell some of my possessions to afford the train ticket home for the summer and a passport application so I could apply for a student overdraft, so I had the money to get back to university in September. Took about eight years after graduating before I was able to pay that overdraft down, and that's after initially graduating without a degree, because I owed the university pound 1,000 for the extra modules I had to take in years two and three of university, to make up for the failed modules in year one. And all that because I gave too much of myself to someone I couldn't have helped with even five times my personal capacity. So yeah, no matter how much money I was offered, I would not enter a situation where I couldn't pick and choose who I get to help. Some negativity in life is inevitable but intentionally thrusting myself into that type of environment and all the risks that entails to me personally? Nah, especially not with all the challenges I already have at home. No amount of money is enough. Unless, you know, it was the sort of money that meant I worked one year, and then neither me, nor my wife, nor my descendants would ever have to work again. I'd maybe settle for just me and my wife, then do smart investments. I could survive it for a year, then use five years to recover, then enjoy the rest of my life. Otherwise, God, no. Edit. Any job that required me to actually be evil. No matter how much money, no, no evil. Story 16. For some, 
the idea of working in certain professions goes beyond the monetary compensation. Jobs involving harm to others, such as those in the tobacco industry, or roles that compromise personal values, like certain political positions, might be off the table regardless of the paycheck. Additionally, jobs with high stress levels, significant ethical dilemmas, or poor work-life balance could be undesirable despite lucrative offers. Each person's boundaries differ, and factors beyond money like mental health, personal values, and overall well-being often influence their career choices. Story 17. I'm sure this will get buried or deleted, so here we go. A certain box-making company that's fairly new to the northwest Arkansas area. The place is horribly managed to the point where supervisors resign after a couple weeks, and it also has one of the highest turnover rates for any company in northwestern Arkansas. I never got a single raise the whole eight months I worked there and was offered four hours of overtime only one single time. Why else would I never work here again besides the reasons stated above? Drama. It came to light sometime after I left that two of my co-workers— that still work there to this day, are actually providing sexual favors for the manager in exchange for overtime hours and raises. Illegal as hell, but nobody seemed to care about it. The two co-workers are a 40-wyo mom and her 23-wyo daughter. They'd been working there for about five months before I got hired. The daughter smokes a lot of pot and is the worst performer in terms of production and efficiency. But she got a raise before anyone else at that plant, and it was supposed to be secret. Same with the mom, only she's more quiet and actually puts in work. I only know this because I started asking around before I left. But while we were getting weekly group meetings promising to us all that raises and bonuses are coming for everyone, nobody actually got a raise except these two hoes. Meanwhile, the manager is a 50-YO married man with kids and even had his own son working there when I left. Due to them being unable to get any help, even using three different temp agencies in the area. Yeah, that place is a mess. And according to a friend that still works there, nothing's changed. Several physical fights have broken out between the sum of their old heads, and the girls are still the only ones getting raises, apparently. Story 18. A teacher. I can't do it. But just because of the pay, the politics, kids, or the click, and yes, I did spell click with a K. The BS just to get through all of school. A lot of us know how hard is school for us. There are teachers who are great in what they do, but some just don't give a damn. If you don't want to help the student get his or her diploma was the point of you being there. I had a friend who's struggling with LD, and he had an IEP meeting all four years of high school. Even though he had all the credits that was accounted, his didn't graduate with a regular diploma but a special diploma, which is a, a certificate of completion. Now he's has to take his GED, so it's like he did four years for nothing. Also, I wouldn't have the patience for the other teachers. Story 19. Actuary. I won't say that actuaries are bad people, but at every turn where I've met someone who is an actuary, they always turn out to be enabling some morally questionable things at best. These are people with advanced math skills with specialization in statistical analysis. They are most commonly put to use in risk assessment, most notoriously by insurance companies, but every large company has actuaries on staff. These people are the ones responsible for gaming out the data and math that is used to put a price on human life versus the cost of fixing something. I'm not even being hyperbolic when I say this. At every turn, product development and modification has a cost analysis. If anything needs to be made to a higher standard for safety, or if cost needs to be cut even at risk of a health hazard, an actuary is involved. They will literally be tasked, sooner or later, with determining which is cheaper, human life or the cost of helping, protecting people. It shouldn't come as a surprise which of those options usually saves money. There's a particularly dark scene in the film Fight Club where the main character is examining a car where the passengers burned alive while trapped within. The company determined that the likely legal cost they would have over the life of the car model was far cheaper than issuing a recall. The reason this scene exists is because of the legal documentation that surfaced during discovery of a real legal case proving A, the Ford Motor Company, actually did this. My point being that this sort of decision is not possible without an actuary. It's not an evil career, but it is a skill that inevitably aids some very evil people. This is why, when I had the option to take classes in college to specifically be an actuary, I chose to just stick to accounting. Those risk assessment tables are actually grooves carved into stone for blood to flow through. Story 20. Anything that comes with a dull routine where you get to exercise no creativity, notably corporate lower-end jobs, but the most annoying I can think of is an accountant. You spend your life in a cubicle. Freelance accountants are much less common. 
and all you do is scrunch numbers, run accounting software, monitor certain process, and more. You don't get any creative freedom or the right to make pretty much any decision. That's a job for the higher-ups. And by choosing this particular branch of business, you've doomed yourself to probably never getting more than that. A job, in my opinion, shouldn't be a boring routine you do until you die or retire, more likely die in this economy. A job is something you should enjoy doing and wouldn't mind doing for the rest of your life. Story 21. Work at a garbage dump. I had to run a load there recently. I live in the desert, so it's always hot. It's the first and the last time I'll ever do that. I was literally gagging, dry heaving, and had tears streaming down my face. I felt like I was drenched in that hot garbage stench for the hour it took me to unload my trash and drive back home. I yeeted myself into a scalding hot shower as soon as I walked in the door and scrubbed myself raw. Mad respect for the garbage collectors and employees at the dump. I can't even imagine how they can tolerate it. Asterisk smelling might be my superpower. I tend to smell icky things first, stronger than others I know, and I have harsher reactions. Story 22. Teaching little kids. Toddler 3 RD grade. I know some people love little kids, but no amount of money would make up for being in a room full of viruses and missing out on my plans or spending the holidays with my family over and over again because I am sick. One of my parents is an upper grades elementary school teacher, and it's bad enough with the older kids. I literally would rather clean bathrooms. At least I'm allowed to wear PPE without being shamed. Exterminator is another one pests and carcinogens. Also veterinarian. I can't deal with the emotional trauma day in and day out. Story 23. Surgeon, USA. I worked for many, specifically ophthalmologists. They bring a lot of work and worry home with them and hardly have time to enjoy their money at all. Constant legal threats to worry about. Any vacation they take is one week max, and it's a huge headache getting an on-call surgeon to handle any emergent problems their patients may have while they're gone. Even then, they usually have to call the vacationing surgeon to discuss details. I actually felt lucky going home carefree to my studio apartment and meager means at the end of the day. Story 24. I would absolutely hate customer service sector like retail. Never. On the flip side, though, I'd love to be a history teacher now. Not as a job, the pay is shit. But my current history class is boring, and we only cover pretty much the politics. Going over WW1, we covered only the alliances, relationships, mutual defense pacts, and the Treaty of Versailles. So much wasted class time on repeat notes, I can make that interesting. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Be sure to write comments and share your stories.